Um, cold chain, as we know, is a series of actions and devices that help maintain a cold or low temperature situation to maintain the integrity of a product. And here we're talking about drugs. So that would be from manufacturing start until the administration. Um, as far as pharmacies go, their responsibility lies in delivering the drugs and maintaining their integrity throughout the whole process. This includes maintaining temperature and humidity and storage mainly. And most of the states, they do have laws that they've had them for a while that fall under these categories because they have to maintain proper storage for their drugs. Um, there's only one state, there's some different levels that go along with it. One state just specifies they need to have good pharmaceutical practices and that's Alabama. They don't go into specifics. <laughs> so uh, there's 14 states that cite minimum standards are required for temperature monitoring for the pharmacies. And that means they just meet an adequate or sufficient level. There are 27 states that cite very specific temperature control standards. And that means they're following like the USP or the manufacturer's guidelines. Uh, some uh, states specify they go into a little bit more detail like Nevada, a regulation states the specific temperatures that the refrigerator, a freezer or a cool place, which must fall. I'm not sure what they mean by cool place, but they specify that. <laughs> In Nevada, they talk about the legal possession and control of drugs that are administered as immunizations. And they actually state that the immunizations must be transported and stored at the proper temps per the manufacturer. So some of the states will get more specific regarding immunizations, which is so in the news right now with an upcoming COVID vaccination. Uh, and, and we have more- I'm gonna interrupt you with a question that's really timely to what you're talking about. So somebody's saying, asking the first two COVID-19 vaccines most likely will be approved by the, approved by the FDA will require extreme cold temperature for storage. How will this be affected by cold chain? Well, the ultra low that and when they and I'm going to talk a little bit about that later in this section. Okay. About the COVID, yeah, the COVID-19 vaccine plans that everybody had to submit. Lisa referenced that too. And ultra low cold is a is a question and it's going to be a major concern. So they do have to address things in their plans that they submit to the CDC. So and we know that we already have um, products being shipped and in cold chain that have to follow that ultra low um, temperature. So right. there is already a, a good way to ship those products and make sure they stay in cold chain. And then the pharmacies that receive them have already been doing with other products. So um, just looking at either if you don't have that, you don't have a, this ultra cold in your own pharmacies, um, looking at some SOPs uh, that might be available from other entities. Um, and I think that there's tons of discussion on, on the internet too, if you need to develop those, those procedures. Right, uh, and if they, you. sure, I'm gonna say, if they aren't aware of ultra low cold, they're going to be aware of it very soon because they will have to have a plan for it. So, and then um, for the, in North Carolina, talks about in two of their, um, their laws, administration of vaccines by pharmacists, they specifically say all of the vaccines administered by an immunizing pharmacy have to be transported and stored at the proper temperatures for each drug. So those are some of the basics for pharmacies, things that are already in existence. There are a few states, uh, actually there's five states that don't address temperature specifically in their laws. Uh, so federal regulations would, would override that. But we do have a few that, that break out exceptions. California statute, they do, do discuss hospital pharmacies. They have to follow the national guidelines, national standards and manufacturers guidelines. And home health and hospice has to follow USP. So, and then Indiana talks about sterile products dispensing. They have to monitor refrigerator temp. So that, that goes along with it. And then Rhode Island, they have a general requirements regulation that they do discuss institutional pharmacy requirements and they have to store and label their drugs per their state food and drug and cosmetics act which is a little bit different but so every state has their laws you just have to to dig in and see what they specifically address in those 
So um, I wanted to go back to our cold chain on COVID-19 vaccines and thank you to our ASPL president, Michael Podgorski, for um, letting me know some of the, the problems there are logistically. And he says these vaccines require medical grade freezers, which most pharmacies don't already have. So there is going to be um, an expense added to that. Um, I don't know what the answer is to that. Um, Certainly, let's hope that the reimbursement rates for those vaccines is high enough that would cover the additional amount, but who knows? Uh, unfortunately, it's like another one of these times where pharmacists are asked to do more and more and more with less and less and less money. I hope that COVID-19 is going to have um, some impact on trying to make sure that our healthcare uh, system stays working as it, was, uh, you know, as it should be working. Right. So, okay. 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 And so now talking a little bit more about the COVID-19, um, just vaccines, but another aspect that plays into cold chain with pharmacies, especially is delivery by pharmacy versus delivery by mail. Um, a lot of this has come up just because of COVID people are more quarantined. They're not getting out as much. They don't want to risk it. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about mail order pharmacies. All of the states, but Massachusetts, license their non-resident pharmacies. Uh, there's a Massachusetts statute that discusses non-resident pharmacies, and although they don't currently license them, it's still awaiting board approval. So that may be something they do in the future. But Massachusetts is the one state, even though they allow them to deliver, they don't license them. Uh, some states have additional requirements as well. In Delaware, they also require a written notice that needs to be placed in the shipping container and that alerts the patient that the drugs may need to be uh, stored in a cool place affected by temperature extremes or humidity. Uh, we also have um, 15 states that specifically require a controlled substance permit if they're going to be delivering controlled substances into that state and that's in addition to their being a licensed as a non resident pharmacy. And recently, Georgia adopted a regulation, and this happened during the pandemic, uh, that addresses delivery by mail. This was effective in September, and it's going to last into January until the 7th. And they specify that mail order pharmacies have to follow manufacturer, USP, and the federal standards when they're delivering medications to the patients, as well as the state laws. So we do see some states that are specifically doing you know, more delivery by mail regulations because of the situation we're in right now. Um, the next topic as far as instead of being mail delivery, we have pharmacies that are directly delivering to the patient or their agent. A lot of pharmacies are doing this now. I know my mother uses it in Ohio. Um, all of the states but four allow delivery on some level to patients. Um, they, and, and those four, it's just the law is silent. They don't say one way or another what they are allowing. Um, Minnesota specifically states that the physician in charge has to ensure the environmental control of all the products that are shipped. So it falls back on them. Um, compounded sterile products have to be shipped or delivered per a different Minnesota regulation. And then they have to be stored appropriately in the patient's home. So patients need to be made aware of storage, storage things as well. Um, that same Minnesota regulation also specifies the pharmacy using the postal service or another common carrier to deliver their prescriptions. They have to have adequate storage or shipping containers. And this would obviously go to what temperature does the, do the drugs need to be stored at. Um, they also have to ensure the processes ensure the drug stability. Those processes that they, they know include packing materials, any sort of devices that are recommended by the manufacturers or USP. It has to keep the drugs at the proper temperature throughout the delivery process if they aren't room temperature specified. It includes sealed shipping containers, and then they also have to maintain compliance and temperature requirements. An interesting note on that regulation is that if they're delivering Schedule II controlled substances, which is interesting that they do allow that, they have to have a chain of possession for the delivery, and it has to be documented and a receipt has to be obtained for those. So that was, that was an interesting okay. one on that. And I have Amy Carlson um, commenting that the scope of that Minnesota rule is um, for parental and rural home health care pharmacies only. 
Um, and I think that's correct. Um, we, I think we were just telling this as a, one of the examples of how the rules are going and moving. So just um, thank you for that, that clarification, Amy. Yeah, thank you.